my first paying job as an artist, I was 14 years old, and I worked at a commercial art studio in Chicago, uh, delivering artwork for the artists. Would take it around downtown, and when I would come back, then the artists would teach me how to draw, illustrate, and things like that. And I made a dollar an hour. Being an artist and enjoying what you do is um, is is really a nice lifestyle. My name is Ted Gall, and I live here in Ojai, California. I'm a sculptor. I've been doing that for at least 50 years. You know, there's a lot of jobs people have that people just accept. You know, they're just normal. And, and uh, being an artist, and, I'm, and I do pretty well at it, and to hear somebody really excited about your work, a lot of people like that. You know, it's a good feeling. I, you know, I went to the movies one night and, uh, and saw uh, this uh, movie about this guy that was a sculptor. And it really was exciting. You know, I'd always worked with my hands, you know, and, I, and so I thought I'd try it. And uh, started working at it, went to the Art Institute of Chicago. I learned how to weld. I was doing all welded steel and doing clay and things like that. And, you know, you, you could make a living as uh, an artist working in art fairs. And I traveled around the country and did that. Uh, so there was probably uh, eight shows on the circuit that I would do a year, and that's all I would do. And now it's at the point where I don't do shows any longer. I just got tired of it. So now I work at home and I have four or five galleries that handle me around the country and sell my artwork. You know, when you're an artist, it's, uh, it's a pretty good deal. You know, it's not a nine to five. I come down here when I want to, but in general, the night before, I think about what I'm going to do the next day. And then I'm kind of excited about it and I go down and start working and uh, the day runs by. You know, sometimes you run dry, you don't have things to do. But I think having worked as an animator, uh, it, it's narrative, you know, and I tell stories with my work. I don't just do a picture of a pig, you know, or a sculpture of a pig. I try to get motion or would be a story in it. I like mythology, you know, I like anthropology. So I think all the things that you read, that you surround yourself by, that's what your work becomes, you know, whatever influences you. When I was young and first starting and I didn't have any money, I'd go around to metal shops and dig through their scrap bins. So I'd have metal that I could work with. And I went into this factory one time and I, and I asked the guy if I could have scrap and he said, sure. And he said, I've also got a bunch of steel wheels. So he gave me a couple barrels of wheels and I went home and I started thinking about it. And if you really look at my figures, they look like science fiction. When I first started as a kid drawing, um, we were pretty poor. We lived in a poor area. I couldn't go to a drawing school. So I would copy comic books, you know, and, and so then you see the exaggerated long legs and things like that. They were very dramatic. And I developed a group of people that were heroes and they would fly across the landscape and travel through areas and they would watch out and protect people. That was the concept. And, and how did they do that? They didn't have horses, they had, they had wheels. You know? And it became the things that you see now that are pretty common. But when I started doing these 50 years, there weren't any you know, wheeled objects like this. So I came up with a whole kind of society and that was my guys, the guys that I did on wheels. So I was down in Florida and uh, this tall white haired guy came over and he looked at my work and, and he introduced himself and he said, do you think he could do those bigger? And I said, well, what do you, what do you want? You know, and he says, well, I'm building a museum in Birmingham, Alabama, and it's all about motorcycles. And that's what this is. So I developed this whole series of people and, and the man's name was George Barber and he then commissioned me to do three wheel figures that he was would put out in front of his brand new museum. And he sent me home thinking about it. And the first one I did, I sent him a drawing of a six foot figure riding on a wheel. And he sent a note back saying, no bigger, you know. So that continued until I finally ended up doing three pieces for him that were 18 feet long and they were 13 feet tall. And they were, he has a racetrack there, so they were challenging each other. So they were racing, and that's what these guys do out in front of the museum. And that took me about two years to do. But large things are, they're a challenge, and you've got to be prepared to put a lot of time on it. How do I start a piece? You know, where, where does it come from? And so you let your mind kind of run away, 
you know, and you, and you fantasize about things. And uh, so this particular piece is kind of a psychological piece, and it, it's talking about people that are trying to change. Okay, so I thought about that and said, how could I express that? And, uh, most of my pieces, the smaller ones, are articulated. They open and close. And, um, and this particular one, it's using the faces kind of like metaphors. A lot of the things that I do are psychological. Some are fun and, and some are a little bit more serious. And uh, by adding a face to me, that may make him more intelligent, uh, more caring, more loving. You know, it's, it's changes that he makes and it's very complicated to do. And in this particular piece, I'm using masks that are now masks talking to masks to help him change, okay? And this is the man on the inside that's thinking about it, that wants to change. These are the vehicles that he's using to change. And this is what's causing the change. On the inside, there's a very small sculptor that's carving, he's changing it. And these people down in the foreground, they're his art directors. They're his wife, they're his girlfriend, they're his friend. You know, and they're talking about, well, you should be nicer, you should be more kind. So this is something I thought about, and then, then it's, how do I illustrate that? So then you start thinking about it, and that's, that's how I came up with all these different concepts. What challenges me? You know, and over the years it's changed. In the beginning, it was money, and then later on you do things that you like to do, right? So I would pick something, some particular... Uh, subject matter that might be of interest to me, and I would try to express it in a piece of art. You gotta like to work with your hands, and you have to get to the point where it takes a long time to do. Uh, it gets boring for somebody, you know, so you've gotta have patience, and uh, I think you have to think mechanically, and, uh, and you've gotta be not afraid of a lot of work. If you're drawing, you're doing sketches and things like that, it's pretty fast. You know, you think about it, but it's fast, it's spontaneous in painting, you know. You, well, you think about a monumental piece of sculpture and it takes you 10 minutes to design it and then it takes you a year to complete it. So you've got to have patience, you know. The challenging part is satisfying yourself. You know, you, it depends upon how long you've been doing it, you know. And I look back and at my work and I see things that I'll never do again. You know, and I was better at it then than I am now. And as, as you grow older, you, you become better at other things. You know, so time is you know, it's kind of philosophical. You know, what, what's really hard for you is the thing that challenges you the most, you know. So you don't want to be doing the same thing over and over again. It, you know, I've done a number of elephants over the years and a number of bears, but they're all different, you know. You know, nothing stays the same. Things change all the time. I've been very fortunate, you know, I've kind of let, let, let things move me around, you know, and it, I mean, I was a graphic designer, I changed that, I was a, an animator, I became a sculptor, and, and I'm fortunate the things that I chose were timely, and I was able to uh, continue and make a living, yet still have a good time doing it. And um, everything in your life that you handle is a challenge, and if you do a good job on it, you feel great. It's not only the money that you're going to get, but it helps you survive, you know. And the better you get, it works for you. So it, it all ties together, and, and it makes you happier. You know, it's challenges that you can handle are 